Welcome back. This is Michelle from Michelle's Empty Nest, and I'm back with you today to do another Try It Out Thursday. I did one in January on my new Heidi Swap cinch machine that I had gotten for Christmas, and I intended to do one of these every month. But after coming down with COVID and then going straight into moving my craft room downstairs, it was a crazy couple of months, and I just did not get around to it. But I wanted to go ahead and do one for April because I do have quite a few things that I really want to try out with you for the first time here on camera and um, hopefully maybe alleviate some of the fears you have or show you a tip or two, show you something that went wrong that you can learn from if you have it in your own stash or if you're thinking about picking up this certain item that I'm going to um, share with you each month. So for today, I have the Simon Hurley Stamping Foam by Ranger. And this was very inexpensive. I wanna say it was maybe about $5. And you get four pieces in here. Um, and they're each three by 4.25 inches. Um, and these have been out for several months now. It's It's been a while, maybe close to a year. I, I really honestly can't remember. But um, I had them on my wish list for a while and just kept forgetting to pick them up. And then finally I did. And then I've had them for a few months and haven't used them. So I wanted to try them out today. And my understanding is there used to be something similar to this on the market years ago. And this was just kind of maybe a revamp of the product. Um, that was before my time, but I've heard that mentioned. So you may have something from the past that is similar to this, even if you don't have these by Simon Hurley. So I'm going to open them up, give it a shot. And I pulled out um, two embossing folders to try. And um, we'll see how they look. I have some inks out that I think I'm going to use and some Nina uh, Solar Crest, no, Classic Crest Solar White cardstock to uh, do some practice stamping on. So I'm going to put you on fast forward because I'm going to have to be using my heat gun. And I think it might be easier to just fast forward and then voice over um, what I'm doing. So let's do it. All right, part of this video is going to be in real time, and there's a couple places where I'm gonna to come to you and speed it up in voiceover like I am now, just depending on what I'm doing. So I was just looking at the instructions on the back there. They're very simple, um, very short. <laughs> it just tells you to heat it up and um, make the impression, and that you can reuse it over and over and over again. So when I start off here, I've got my heat gun on low because I don't want to melt it. I'm not really sure what I'm doing and I get nothing. So then I just turn my heat gun up to high, heat it up some more. And the instruction said about 10 to 15 seconds um, to heat it up for that amount of time. And so this time after I've put it on high, I do get a good impression and it doesn't show up really well there, but it's there. And then this ink pad, I end up kind of scrubbing it across the foam. It, I didn't realize that it seems to be a little bit on the dry side. So it was leaving like the little square edges of the, the foam pad or the um, stamp pad. So um, I did have to kind of work with that a little bit. But I, I feel like I got a good impression. I really thought it did well. Um, and I was kind of happy with what I got. So uh, there is some cleanup involved. You'll see me go through a lot of baby wipes here in this video. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. I think the first time when I could not get an impression, I had my heat gun on low because the instructions on the back say to use the Ranger heat it tool. And I wasn't sure if maybe it didn't get quite as hot or, um, or what, so I didn't want to melt it <laughs> before I even got started. Let me grab another baby wipe. Um, so once I heated it on high instead of low on my heat tool, then it, um, it did get the impression in there and I'm making a mess all over myself. And it's still there. I'm not sure how well it shows up on camera but the impression is definitely still there. Um, the only thing I can see is it might take a little bit of a baby wipe to get the rest of the ink off. And I did stamp it three times, um, did some 
repeat stamping or uh, second and third generation stamping. And I really like how it looks. The third one's too washed out. The second one's okay, but I really do like how it picked up that texture. I think that's pretty neat. Um, and so that was the, my baby wipes out of the way. That was the Sizzix and Tim Holtz 3D Lumber embossing, stamp, uh, or embossing folder. And I probably could have used it on the other side as well. It's more of the indented part instead of the raised part of the embossing folder. But it may have picked up better on that side. I'm not sure. So um, that would be something to kind of play around with as well. So I have another embossing folder that I wanted to use. Sit this to the side. And it is from Altenew, it's called Angled Mosaic. And I thought it would be pretty neat to see how well it picks up all of these. Um, it's kind of like little diamonds. So I'm probably gonna use this side where it's a little more raised feeling, perhaps. So I, first I've got to reheat this to get the indention to go away and then I'll, I should be able to stamp down my next pattern. And I'm gonna start off with just using Saltwater Taffy, the newest Distress Oxide color or Distress color from Tim Holtz. So that's what I'm gonna try next and see how that works. So I'm gonna um, put you back on fast forward again and use my heat tool to get this one hopefully um, back to normal or original state and then I will um, put it onto my next embossing folder. All right, here we go. All right, I was really excited to try out this embossing folder because I love the geometric nature of it. And so I'm um, heating up the foam to flatten it back out, to get it back to its original state. That's what I was showing you there, that the other impression was gone, the wood grain impression. And I get a really good impression here. Um, and I think this would be really neat after you've practiced some and you get a little better with placement, you could do like a larger area or enough of an area maybe to put on onto a card that you make. Um, I just think there's so many different possibilities that you could do with this product. It just lends itself to a lot of different uses. And so... I'm going to tell you here again when I come back on camera to talk to you that I, I realized I pressed down way too hard on that one. And so I think it's a kind of a, a balancing act, a careful dance between how much ink you put and how hard you're pressing down. On this one, I feel like I got a much, much better impression um, with this blend than I did with the first one when I pressed down just entirely too hard. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up again, go through several more baby wipes, and I'll be back to talk to you again in a second. All right, so I wanted to kind of do a comparison here um, of the pressure that I applied onto the stamping foam. So when I was using the saltwater taffy, I was pressing down about as hard as I did when I was pressing to get the impression um, onto the stamping foam. So I feel like I lost some definition of the stamp because it was definitely very clear here on the foam itself. So when I did the blend with the prize ribbon and the villainous potion, I just put a much lighter touch on it because you do have to get a fair amount of ink. You see I'm wiping away a good bit. You do have to get a fair amount of ink on there to cover it all. So um, I feel like I got a better impression as far as the definition of what the stamp should look like. So uh, definitely something to play around with, with how much ink you're using, as well as how much pressure you're actually applying to the foam pad when you're trying to get that stamp down. So I'm gonna put those to the side. And even after stamping, um, you know, two different rounds there, and I'm still, I think, probably <laughs> getting stuff on my hands. Um, even after doing that, even after wiping it off and all of that, I still have the impression from this angled mosaic embossing folder 
on my stamp pad or stamp foam. What are we calling it? Stamping foam. That's what we're calling it. So, um, yeah, so there is a little cleanup involved, but I think if you're trying to do some kind of background stamp, especially, um, maybe even like a second generation stamp, if you just want something a little bit lighter in the background, I'm, I really like it. So I'm gonna heat it up again. I'll do that off camera this time. And um, I'm gonna go find something else around my house to make an impression of. I'm not sure what, just some kind of regular everyday item. And I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I didn't go far. Um, I grabbed this little fake Monstera that I sometimes have up in the corner of my videos, just as some decoration. So I decided that I'm going to try one of the leaves and I'm going to actually see if one will just pull off. Yeah, these are on there pretty good. Okay, we'll just do our best then. I'm gonna heat this up and we're gonna see if we can get a Monstera imp impression in our stamping foam. Not bad. That is actually about 10 times better than I thought it might come out. <laughs> Poor little plant. Hopefully I didn't bend it up too bad. All right, so now I have some mowed lawn and I'm going to ink it up and we'll see what this looks like. I don't know whether I should go over the whole stamp foam or just the area that I'm trying to cover up. Let's see if we can just kind of get somewhat of a line up there. Not really. Okay. So let's see what this does here. So again, I'm not gonna put much pressure, just a little since I have a fair amount of ink. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I missed a little bit here, and that may have just been because of the awkward angle that I had my leaf laying down. Yeah. So not something you would probably use um, just as is, but the fact that you could take maybe um, uh, you know, some type of fake plant, a silk plant or something, and press down on either the, um, the leaves or the flower part, oops, sorry, the flower part itself. Um, so not bad, and you can definitely see it is, it's nice and deep in there. The impression went really well. So let me get this cleaned off and I'll be back again in just a minute. Okay, friends, I think I'm going to call this a success. Um, there's definitely a learning curve, so I have much improvement to do, but considering this was my first time just straight out of the bag using them, um, I'm pleased with how it turned out. So not only can you do embossing folders, 
Uh, you could probably use dyes as well. Uh, you can use fake plants. You can do any type of fabric that has a texture, so like a denim or a sweater, maybe a, um, some kind of crochet or a macrame project. Um, really, I think the possibilities are endless of what you could impress into this foam. And, um, you know, just play around with, you wanna press hard when you're trying to get the impression, but then maybe not press so hard when you're actually going to put the stamp down. And you would definitely need to play with how much ink you put on the stamp. And I think it would depend on the impression as to how much ink you would need to put. The wood grain needed more ink than the mosaic did. And the flower, the side that I was able to get fairly well, or the monstera leaf, you can see even the tiniest veining there. Now this side I wasn't able to really get a, a clear impression on just because of the way I was holding it. But uh, if it had been separate from the plant itself, I probably could have gotten this awesome graining throughout the whole thing. So um, just very neat. And then I wonder, you know, maybe even you could do it in, um, some tw some ink and then emboss on top of that um, would also be pretty neat for different kind of images. So I think there's an awful lot of possibilities that you can do with this Simon Hurley uh, stamping foam. So hopefully if you have some in your stash or if you've been thinking about it, this may have swayed you one way or the other thinking, yes, that's something I can use or no, I just don't think that's for me. Maybe I gave you a tip or two or if you have a tip for me, I would also love to hear that as well. And you can leave that down there in the comment section. And there will be links to this in the description box as well as a lot of products that I use all the time. They're always down there. So hopefully you enjoyed the video today, and if you did, I would love a thumbs up, and please consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. I would love to have you as part of my little YouTube family. So I may try to get some close-up photos and post them um, at the end, as well as over on Instagram if I can get some good shots of these. And until I see you in the next video, take care of yourself, do something good for yourself, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.